Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jack and I am yet another Let's Player here on YouTube. And continuing on with our celebration of the upcoming Incredibles 2, it is time for the Let's Play of what's pretty much the closest thing we ever got to an Incredibles 2 for many years. This is The Incredibles Rise of the Underminer! With a very electrifying THQ logo, it has to be said. May they rest in peace. However, that works with a company. But anyway, yes, for many years, this was the closest thing we had to an Incredibles 2. And it seems like the movie is going to open up with the Underminer attack. Though, I would imagine that really only applies to the opening scene. Alright, let's begin. Unlike the first game, I actually did practice this a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, I mean, I didn't get very far, but you know. That's something, right? It's got to be something. So, let's just start this bottom one here, and get a move on. We've seen the movie, so really, we don't need to see this. <laughs> it's time for level one, the Underminer Threats. So this game is considerably different from its predecessor, but the general gameplay is still the same, with one major difference that we will see very shortly. Alright, well at least Jack Jack isn't too bothered by all of this, but welcome to Rise of the Underminer. Chickens! Chickens everywhere. Am I playing a Zelda game? If I punch them, will they attack me? Alright, yes, but our key difference here, this game is multiplayer. I don't have anyone to play with, or a second controller. Alright, this is for interrupting me while I was explaining stuff. So yes, this game is it can be a two-player adventure. One person will play as Mr. Incredible, the other will play as Frozone. Uh, but in single-player mode, if you ever want to switch between them, just hit up on the D-pad. So I'm playing this on the PlayStation 2. I think it was available on all the consoles. I don't see why it wouldn't be. And there is, there is both a Game Boy Advance and a DS version. The Game Boy Advance is pretty much the same as the uh, first game on the Game Boy Advance. It's like a 2D beat-em-up. With pretty much the same kind of graphics as well. Whereas the DS version, it's like a 2.5D sort of thing, and it didn't it didn't look very good, to be honest, from the little bit of, of it that I've seen. Say what is good though, the improvements this game makes over the first one. The combat is much smoother this time around. It is actually useful because you can just spam your attacks. Enemies don't just overwhelm you all the time. This game is much better when it comes to the combat, and you have two different sets of abilities. Both characters can punch, obviously, but you have a different variety of moves. Mr. Incredible still has his body slam. Anyway, Mr. Incredible still has his body slam. He can roll, which you now do with the... You, know, you no longer have a crouch, but you do the roll with the right analog stick. And, yeah, there we go. Frozone can freeze stuff, which you can use to free freeze projectiles, which Mr. Incredible can pick up and throw, which is the same button as it was before. And I, I thought that I had destroyed the uh, projectile doing that. I think I did, and I think it still went through the, through the missile and into the robot. Uh, but Frozone also has a dodge move, it's a sort of slide, and these actually do work as attacks now. No, I still need Frozone for this. 
That's right, just keep punching Mr. Incredible, who may or may not get out of the way. It's up to him, really. We have a variety of... So we do have a variety of moves. And what this game also has is an upgrade system. Now, the thing is, as I discovered during my little bit of uh, Jurassic Park Operation Genesis... Go check it out if you haven't already. What I discovered is that... Um, What I discovered is that this, I say new PS2 controller, it is, I'm pretty sure it's pre-owned, but the select button doesn't work. And the way you upgrade your characters in, in, in the actual levels is to hit the select button. Uh, but that doesn't work, so thankfully you can still upgrade your characters at the end of the levels, and should you cross the experience for the next upgrade before upgrading the first one, you'll still just be able to use two upgrades. So I will only be able to upgrade at the end of the level, so, and if there's any point where it's like through a good portion of the level it just says, press select to upgrade, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. You know, I'll, get, I'll be sure to get another controller, but you know, they are what we say in England, cheapest chips, and what do you expect? The best selling video game console ever, even official ones are like a tenner. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's annoying, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. I think I have, like, one game where the select button is mandatory. And that's the SpongeBob SquarePants movie game, which I have no desire to play for the time being. I like the game, but I have no desire to play it for a while. But that, that, that game will require it. The, the select button is mandatory to finish the game in, in that. And the game is much harder without it. But other than that, there's always like another means of gain of getting to whatever I whatever I need with the select button. It might be there's another way of accessing a menu. It might be that it it might be like the Simpsons hit and run. It requires a reset for your car should you get stuck, which it normally does automatically anyway. So it's not the end of the world. Boy, that's a big drill. Spoiler warning, we're, go we're not going to be seeing that drill. For we're not going to be seeing what that drill does until endgame. Alright, so we've got every robot in this game. Every enemy in this game is a robot. And anyone that has these little orange things on their above their heads means a super move is now available. Once that's available, hit R2 and hit L1 and L... L1 and R1 at the same time. And you can perform your super move. It's not quite a screen nuke, but it's close enough. So Mr. Incredible will keep punching the ground, creating shockwaves, and will break the camera. Frozen will freeze a lot of enemies nearby and then send down a load of icicles. Now, back to business. You know where he went. So let's follow. Yeah, Frozone will uh, <clears throat> freeze all the nearby enemies, and not all of them, but some, most of them. And if he doesn't, uh, he'll send down like a load of icicles and he'll destroy all the robots anyway. So not all of them, some, but those that don't usually remain frozen. Anyway, once you finish a level, you do get a number of experience points. And then you get your level stats. So you've got punch damage, your incredible slam and ice glide damage, your throw and freeze ray damage, your dodge damage, your super move damage, the number of enemies you defeated and the number of times you died. And each level has four objectives. To make a certain to do a certain amount of damage with a particular character, and for that character to not die throughout the level. Now Unless you're playing in two player, and even then I'm not sure if it's possible all the time. 
you will not be able to get the damage dealt uh, objective for both characters within a level. Unless you know exactly how much you've been able to do. Like in that level, it maybe it's possible for you to work out when you've done enough for Mr. Incredible and then do Frozone. But not not every level will have the opportunity. There won't always be enough enemies. I'm pretty sure there isn't anyway, and then not dying self-explanatory. I don't think leaving that weapon behind was part of his plan. He may have been anticipating us, so we should be ready for anything. Come on! Spoiler warning, that was part of his plan. Right, I believe these guys are known as auger bots or something like that. And these are some of my least favorite enemies in the game because these guys can dig underground. <laughs> and it, that is really annoying when that happens. Because they like to do that a lot. Now, at the moment it isn't too bad, but when we get to a later level, we will see why it can be very frustrating. Alright, so generally I'm just going to be alternating between the main character I play as. So, the previous level I mostly played as Mr. Incredible, and this one I'll be mostly Frozone. But every now and then, the level will require you to switch to a different to one of the characters to perform a certain ability. Which you can see by these little circles on the floor, just like what we had in the previous game. And Mr. Incredible can lift stuff, like he did with the doors in the first game. Frozone will create ice bridges. Main recommendation, however, is to get rid of the enemies in the background, or at least knock them far away enough in order for them to not take, in order for them to stop shooting at you. Unfortunately, in this guy's case, that's pretty far away. Now, these guys take about three projectiles to take down. I believe the bigger the object, I think the more damage it does, and the further away it will send them when it hits them. But there we go. Hit the triangle button to form your ability. If you let go of the button, Frozen will stop. But if you switch characters while still holding the button, uh, Frozen will carry on. It's mandatory in one of the optional levels that I'll be showing off. If you're playing in single player. Something I would say proves that not quite everything was designed around the single player option. I'm pretty sure this game wants you to do multiplayer, but, you know, the game is still perfectly fine when you're playing in single player. I used to play this game quite a lot with my cousin, actually. I mean, usually I always ended up being frozen, even though I didn't always want to, but, you know, I don't care. Um, and, you know, we always had a good time playing this. So it was pretty cool being able to play an Incredibles game with two playable characters. And, you know, after the first game, I got so used to all of the other characters. It was like, it was quite refreshing, really, being able to play as somebody else. You know, to be, to be able to play as Frozen. Why am I still Mr. Incredible? I want to be Frozen. <laughs> I don't want to be Mr. Incredible. Unless they're really low on health. Unless they're really low on health, or if you you're able to knock them into a pit. Dodging into your enemies isn't really going to be of much use. Because it does so little damage. That it's really pointless. I don't know why it's even an attack. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing. Like it pretty much was in the first game. These things remind me a lot of the, tr of the tracks that were left behind by the tanks in the first game. And I don't like that. Right, no more button mashing. You, that works immediately. You just need to hold the button down now. Much better. And for the most part, Mr. Incredible is faster. Though it does depend on the object. Right, the big guys uh, don't stay frozen for very long. You've got to be fast with them. But the speed in which they actually become frozen, I think, is the same. Now, all of these robots, I believe, have names. Yes, that's what I don't like. Uh, the big ones at the moment, I believe, are called trench bots. If you look at the concept art, you can see it. But yeah, I, I'm hitting the select button. I can't do anything. That's going to be on screen for the rest of the level. 
Alright, see if I can freeze him. Sometimes Mr. Incredible will go up and punch the, the uh, robot one free. I'm convinced that, I'm pretty sure that happened to me whilst I was doing the test playthrough. Yeah, he will like punch him while they're still freezing, and that can be a bit annoying. <laughs> Ah, uh, glad to see that continued over from the first game. Aiming for the wrong thing whilst you're moving forwards. Alright. Nope, still not on us. The trench bots are far away, Bob. By the way, Frozone managed to get his super suit. Surprisingly, I didn't mention that during the final part of the first game. Manage to get your suit then, ASAP. Now, if there's any point where you want your teammate to follow more closely, uh, you just hit left. If you hit right on the D pad, then they'll follow more closely. And you can hit left again to then get them to stay further away. If you don't want your teammate moving at all, and I don't know why you would want that. Then you can just then you hit the down button. All right, I'll freeze these then. Damn it! Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes your characters will move out of the way when you're not in control of them. Other times they don't. Oh no, I got it. So anyway, this is our second level, digging deeper. <laughs> There's not that many levels in the game, and for the most part, they are pretty short. There isn't anything that's like a 40-minute gargantuan level like in the first game. There are some levels that get kind of close, but for the most part, it's nowhere near as bad. There's really only one level in this game that I find goes on for too long. And even then, it's like the third to last level. But overall, this is a pretty short game. So we'll use the Incredit Slam, which is no, you no longer have Incredit moves. It's just, you hit the square button now. And there's no meter for it. So obviously, its strength is just all about the upgrade system. Eventually, we will be able to pick up enemies that are not frozen. I can't remember if you have to get it. I don't remember how high the level needs to your level needs to be for punching, but eventually you'll be able to stun enemies by punching them, and then you can pick them up. But that won't be instant death when you throw them. Like that only does limited damage. But your throwing range is massive. As long as that icon is there, you can throw something. But the range is pretty big in this game. Now, I've probably missed a few already, but one thing that is present in this game, returning from the first, are the uh, extra... Oh, there's one here, actually. Are these things. Gallery item unlocked. Just like in the first game, you can unlock concept art. Which is always nice. Ooh, frame drops. <laughs> they are still here. Yeah, unfortunately, no matter how slowly they're moving while you're freezing them, it will still damage you. Except that side. I don't know what happened there. And if one character has got their super moves thing, super moves meter full, then the other character will automatically get it. Eventually, we'll be able to hold on to three. Now these underminer statues in the background here can be destroyed if you throw things at it. Primarily it's going to be the robots. Uh, but it doesn't do anything. It's just a, it's just a little extra detail that you... A little extra thing you can do. Let's see. I think they take about three hits to be fully destroyed. There we go. Oh, we did, oh, there's still one here. Although if it takes enough damage, simply the freezing process will destroy it. But yeah, they take about three hits to be destroyed. I'm not going to bother with this. There's about three of them in this room.
Yeah, so <laughs> you got to be really quick with trench bots, and uh, there'll be a similar one that will appear later on. Frozen's Ice Glide is pretty cool because it does tend to bounce off of enemies, especially when you start to upgrade it. So it's not particularly great against the bigger enemies or boss fights. I will say though, it's very satisfying being able to freeze robots. And yeah, that is satisfying to do. Hey, I'm over here. So if the underminer is always underground, how is he able to make all of this? Like, where did he get all of this metal? I mean, there are plenty of underground metals. <laughs> and apparently he's an expert in engineering. I mean, here's one thing I never got. What is the underminer? Because he's got robotic hands, mole-like teeth. I mean, is he a human? Is he a mutant? Like, what? what is the underminer supposed to be? Alright, a lot of levels will end in a bit of an enemy gauntlet. Not many, though. That didn't. That did something. Alright, but normally that would freeze the enemies. It might have done, but they were off screen. And of course, some of these guys were uh, underground. Already we can see the sludge. It's going to play a bigger role in the next... Well, I say role. It's in the next level, but it doesn't, it doesn't really do anything. But uh, you don't want to fall in it, or you will die. Oh, the Underminer doesn't want to play anymore. He seriously underestimated us. If he thinks he's ever gonna get away. What in the world is that? It looks like that thing was created to turn the whole planet upside down. We need to catch the Underminer fast. The Magnemizer. Whatever this thing is, it's doing whatever it's doing right now. We need to turn this thing off. Magnemizer first. Then we take down the Underminer. We can take a shortcut through the sludge station. Uh, looks like some sort of giant sludge pumping facility. We can exit close to the Magnemizer through one of the smaller pump stations. What are we waiting for? It's showtime. I have two questions. One, why is that computer there? And two, how is it not destroyed when the drill went over it? Also, the characters are like really shiny in this game. <laughs> now, did you see how shiny they were in that cutscene? Yeah, like I said, it's not quite, it's not possible to get all of it. But there are some levels where Frozone's damage goal will be bigger than Mr. Incredible's, but there's not many of them. Right, but yeah, as we can see now, see, Frozone has two upgrade points instead of one, so... I always upgrade health first, and then I tend to go for super moves, just because I like having being able to hold more than one, even though you don't get them that often. <laughs> 